let's go ahead so uh, today's agenda we are going to uh, cover three broad level topics uh, the first one is about learning to generate shareable synthetic nodes uh, this is a paper that i uh, wrote with my colleague at ibm research uh, the next one uh, that we are going to look into is learning to compose discharge summaries automatically uh, this is work done at Amazon. Uh, I was mentoring an intern uh, over summer and uh, this is his work primarily. Uh, finally, um, I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce uh, the audience to uh, Amazon Web Services and how we can do natural language processing with clinical text on the cloud. So let's dig into it. So. <clears throat> AI can generate synthetic data with some very impressive results. So recent examples are from OpenAI, where uh, if you just give the model uh, a caption such as the one here, the image is automatically generated. So the caption is a kid and a dog staring at the stars. And this is the kind of image uh, that the computer is able to generate. Uh, this image does not exist, so it is not a search, but uh, an actual generation. So a computer generates the image from scratch. Uh, look at a second example that is even more ev evident, uh, where uh, the caption that is given to the computer is an elephant tea party on a glass a grass lawn. So clearly, this is a very weird uh, caption, uh, maybe from a fairy tale or from a kid's book but the computer is able to generate the image um, synthetically uh, using uh, artificial intelligence algorithms uh, that it has been trained on. So these images have been taken from uh, one of the executives of OpenAI uh, and uh, their Twitter account. So after looking at these tweets, uh, I wanted to share with you some results about natural language generation in clinical domain. How do algorithms perform when uh, we ask them to generate clinical text uh, automatically? So the first piece of work that I'm going to share is this paper titled uh, Generating Shareable Synthetic Notes Using Neural Language Models. Uh, this is a published paper at uh, NACL, uh, North American Association of Computational Linguistics. So <clears throat> let's look at what is the nature of publicly available clinical text data uh, right now uh, on the internet. So we are very well familiar perhaps with uh, Mimic, which is uh, hosted by MIT. Uh, Leo Anthony Selly uh, presented at the conference a few days ago. Um, it is a fantastic resource uh, made available to the public. Uh, it has controlled access. Uh, over a million nodes available along with structured data. I2B2 uh, was an earlier initiative for the research community where you could have um, clinical texts uh, shared uh, by Harvard University and uh, associates for uh, shared tasks. Uh, these tasks were primarily uh, aimed at a particular task and uh, students and academics across the world would compete to complete the task. So uh, these are the two uh, types of publicly available clinical texts. Uh, apart from these, there's no really large piece of uh, text corpora that are available uh, for anyone to use. So this limits how much text data is available out there. So we ask the question of how can we generate clinical text automatically and perhaps make it available publicly uh, in a shareable format. So these clinical texts are de-identified. You have to go through rigorous training and sign a data use agreement before you can make the uh, text data available. So we, we got data from Mimic 3 and we tried to teach a model how that text looks like. So the specific uh, uh, questions that we went into were, can we train a model to generate clinical notes for us? How good are these notes? Like, let's say we generate these texts, but they are all gibberish. 
then uh, that's no uh, good. So how, how good are these nodes? Uh, we, we need a concrete way to evaluate uh, how good these nodes are. And finally, what are their privacy preserving properties? Like if we decide to share these nodes publicly uh, and if there is any, uh, if there is any leak uh, in the future, uh, it is not something that is desirable. So uh, what are their privacy preserving properties is something we focused on. So let's come to the first question of uh, how are these, uh, how good are these synthetic nodes? So uh, one of the uh, ways to look into this is uh, by monitoring uh, the generated clinical text at different levels. Uh, the first level is very basic, which is uh, a character level task. Uh, so what we do is uh, we, we look into uh, a, a case information recovering task, meaning the input is uh, all lowercase uh, and the, the, uh, a model is trained to output, uh, uppercase such as something like this. Uh, so you, if you notice, uh, the word Steve, uh, since it is the first word of the sentence, uh, S has to be capitalized. Uh, apple here is not the fruit, but the company. So a also has to be capitalized. Um, and then. Uh, in the second sentence, you again have apple. This time it's a fruit, so it has to be lowercase. So uh, if we give a, a model uh, that has been trained to output uh, the proper case when the input is all lowercase, how well does the model perform? So this is a proxy task. What we are trying to understand is a model which is given uh, raw text and is exposed to ground truth uh, correct, uh, case text, uh, we want to see, uh, what are the results? Um, this is a question for the organizers. Uh, are we taking questions in between or shall we take them towards the end? Hello. Okay. I think I'll continue and I'll take questions towards the end. So. Uh, let's, let's go through this. Uh, so this is, uh, one of Alors, the first ways je, by which. Doctor, sorry. je voulais tout simplement, uh, avec votre autorisation, profiter de cette petite pause que vous marquez pour appeler aux différents participants que, um, le, cette conférence donc a une interprétation en, en français, dans les autres langues aussi. Il suffit donc de cliquer sur l'icône, uh, interprétation que vous avez. Euh, sur votre euh, ordinateur et, et derrière, vous pouvez choisir donc euh, la langue euh, dans laquelle vous souhaitez suivre cette conférence. Je ne l'avais pas précisé au départ et j'ai vu dans les différentes questions qui sont revenues que les uns et les autres veulent savoir si on peut bel et bien suivre cela en, en français. Merci Doc et je vous souhaite une bonne continuation. Ok. So, uh, so this is one of the uh, basic ways by which we can check if uh, the character information in the generated text is consistent with how a model would expect it. The second task that we look into is a word level task. So from character levels, now we migrate to word levels and the input to the model is uh, a pair of words. And uh, there is a corpus out there from the publication that is listed on the screen where you know how similar these uh, two concepts are uh, based on a particular score. So uh, the model has to look into uh, the world level representations of these uh, concepts and output a particular score. So uh, this is how we judge if words that are generated by this uh, algorithm how good they are, and is the context around these words also relevant? The next uh, task that we look into is a sentence level task. So uh, the input to uh, a model is uh, a premise uh, and a hypothesis. So given the premise, uh, the model has to determine whether the hypothesis is either an entailment, uh, neutral, or a contradiction. What this means is uh, the model is trained to uh, get the input 
as a premise and a hypothesis and uh, it has to determine one of the three possibilities now a model that has been trained on real world text understands how these sentences are and uh, what they mean in terms of inference uh, what we wanted to know was if we trained a model using synthetic text a synthetic text how well does the model do when it is uh, evaluated on an inference task such as this so finally coming to uh, the third question of uh, privacy preserving properties of these nodes uh, we uh, measure uh, a property called point wise differential training privacy or pdtp uh, what we are trying to see is uh, how well are the predictions when a particular note is included and uh, a particular note is excluded so uh, given uh, uh, exclusion of a note uh, from the entire training set the difference between uh, the predictions should be minimal so the idea is that if someone is observing uh, the predictions of the model uh, by repeatedly taking out a particular clinical note of the clinical text of the text corpus then um, the differences in the predictions shouldn't be high otherwise it is very uh, uh, very easy to determine what note has been removed so these are the kind of privacy preserving properties that we are monitoring so let's look at the results so uh, training these models is very expensive uh, and uh, we train them on a little over 100 million words and um, the model that we used for training is uh, an lstm based uh, language model and uh, we wanted to know uh, how we can tune this by varying the dropout uh, the dropout basically allows uh, us to control uh, how well the model memorizes so uh, if the dropout is zero the the model will try to memorize whatever input text was given to it and if the dropout is high it is going to get a lot of penalty for memorizing the text uh, the second thing that we are measuring is how close are these nodes to the real nodes so we are looking at the perplexity and finally we are looking at what are the privacy preservation properties uh, so uh, which is the differential privacy metric i talked to you about the the unigram model is basically meant to be a baseline so that we understand uh, how well we are doing from a very simplistic model that could achieve something like this so let's look at the results um, what we see here is that if the dropout is zero the model is going to try to memorize a lot in this case the notes are very similar to the re real notes or reasonably similar because the perplexity is low uh, and the privacy preservation in this case is uh, not that good uh, as we increase uh, the dropout we see that uh, the nodes become less close to real nodes but the privacy preservation properties uh, start going up a little so uh, the idea is that uh, which is not really uh, surprising but uh, experiments validate it that as we try to make the nodes uh, less realistic the privacy preserving properties uh, start going up so let's look at how good these synthetic nodes are so um, i i uh, explained to you the case information task uh, that we evaluated the model on and uh, we see that uh, with a dropout of zero the case information is almost uh, close to what a real uh, case inform real nodes uh, case information is uh, for uh, it does drop a little as we increase the dropout but not that much so case information is very well preserved in these nodes the next thing that we look into is a word similarity task uh, where we are given two concepts uh, a model is trained to look at its uh, word level embeddings and trying to determine the similarity uh, we see that for real nodes the word similarity task for the model is 0.6 and there is a little bit of drop as we increase dropout but not that much either 
Finally, we look at uh, a sentence level task of language inference, and we see that for real nodes, it is 72.4. And at point two dropout, uh, we have reasonable privacy, but uh, the accuracy has also not dropped as much. And finally, if we have high dropout, we are actually able to get good accuracy and uh, excellent privacy. So this is how a sample synthetic note looks like. Uh, the brackets that are mentioned as de-identified are uh, by design. Uh, these are marked as uh, de-identification markers in uh, the mimic uh, text. And that is what we see here as well. So let's, uh, if you look at this note at the surface level, it looks very good. Uh, it seems like a very realistic note. So let's dig into the details. If you look at this, uh, the patient's uh, gender is said to be female and uh, the salutation is also replicated by the model correctly as female, but later the pronoun she is replaced by he. So the model isn't really able to understand or keep it consistent. Uh, lastly, if you look at uh, some clinical details of uh, the sentence that has been generated by the model, it does look realistic to someone without any clinical background. But if uh, someone with a clinical background looks into it, it is absolutely gibberish. So uh, that is uh, the, these are some kind of qualitative observations about the generated clinical note. The code for uh, replicating our experiments and the data set on which we evaluated all of these and the uh, models that were used for evaluating the task is all publicly available on GitHub. Uh, I would encourage you to uh, take a look at it. Let's take a look at the next task. Uh, this is a project uh, by uh, an intern, uh, Han Chin, who uh, I mentored over the summer, uh, along with uh, other colleagues uh, at Amazon. Uh, he was a student at University of Maryland, and uh, uh, a couple of these slides have been borrowed from his dissertation defense. So the task here is to compose discharge summaries from prior notes for a hospital admission. Again, the data used for these experiments was MIMIC3, uh, which is a publicly available data set. We have information for uh, all the notes that were written for the patient during the hospital admission, and we are trying to generate the discharge summary automatically. So this is the kind of data that is generated during a hospital encounter. Uh, typically, the patient is admitted into the hospital. There is an admission note. There are physician notes written, nursing notes, probably radiology notes. And finally, when the patient is discharged, uh, a discharge summary is generated. Uh, on the way, the patient also has multiple lab results, medications, uh, perhaps vital signs, and so on and so forth. So we are interested in generating this discharge summary automatically only by looking at these blue-colored uh, notes that are written during the encounter. So let's look at a sample discharge summary from MIMIC3. It is typically very long, but the message that I'm trying to convey here is that you have different sections, allergies, chief complaint, uh, history of present illness, past medical history, so on and so forth. So this is very typical of a discharge summary, especially one that is discharged from the ICU, as in the case of MIMIC-3. And we try to leverage this structure in the discharge summary. So uh, a model was trained to generate seven sections that typically occur in a discharge summary. These include chief complaint, family history, social history, medications, past medical history, history of present illness, and brief hospital course. Again, these are very specific to inpatient hospital admissions where a patient stays for more than 24 hours in the hospital. And uh, uh, these are specific to MIMIC, which is uh, uh, specific to uh, an ICU database. So let's look at the kind of models we trained uh, so that we could generate this discharge summary. So we start with uh, a bunch of documents uh, that are generated for the patient by 
different people giving care to them, such as the doctors, the nurses, uh, and so on. Uh, and uh, what we try to do is we look at uh, these red spots uh, shown between these nodes are the relevant sentences that could be used to write the discharge summary. So we have a extractor model that will go through these uh, collection of documents and uh, generate an extractive summary. Uh, further, we will have an abstractor which will take these uh, sentences that have been extracted by the extractor and uh, rewrite them so that uh, a coherent discharge summary section is generated. We are generating these uh, sections one at a time. So a model is trained for every section. So at a high level, we have an extractor and an abstractor, and we are trying to generate discharge summary sections. So the specific modeling approaches that were used for uh, these two tasks are uh, now shared on the screen. We have a reinforcement learning uh, threshold based approach where uh, reinforcement learning is essentially going to uh, reward the model if it extracts the correct sentences uh, and uh, it is going to punish the model if it extracts the wrong sentences. Uh, pointer generator networks uh, for abstraction are a very well-known uh, set of models uh, that came out of Stanford University. Uh, these are um, a subtle variation of attention-based uh, encoder-decoder networks using LSTMs. Uh, a newer set of models are uh, uh, is the BART model, uh, which is a large pre-trained model for uh, generative text. And finally, we have sentence rewriting, uh, which is uh, one of the pioneering uh, uh, abstractive strategies for uh, for uh, for extractive and abstractive summarization. Uh, so let's look at an example uh, workflow of this extraction followed by abstraction. So let's say we are trying to generate past medical history. We have a large collection of documents that have been generated for a hospital admission. So this is what a reinforcement learning extractor uh, would look like uh, on the relevant sentences. So uh, uh, if you look at the sentences that have been extracted uh, by this model, this is a real example uh, from the Mimic data set and one of the models that we trained. Uh, we see that past medical history is mentioned at the end instead of the beginning. You have different uh, medical conditions, some measurements, uh, and some observations. Now, uh, as I pointed out, you will see that past medical history here is extracted towards the end. Uh, now, the job of the abstractor is to take all of this and uh, write it in a coherent manner that looks like a past medical history. So uh, BART is a model which will uh, try to get the this extraction output and uh, uh, write something like this. So you can see that past medical history is gone as the first sentence. You have hypertension, hyperlipidemia, uh, and then you have some baseline measurements of a lab result. Now let's look at another approach that writes one sentence at a time. So you will see that past medical history was what was just kept from the whole uh, uh, extraction blob. Uh, you can see that uh, these uh, in here also uh, NC occupation was removed and sinus rhythm as a sentence was just replaced by a period. So this is the sentence rewriting approach. Now let's look at uh, how they compare. So this is the reference summary. This, this is what should have been ideally generated. This is what a human would generate as a discharge summary section. This is what a sentence rewriter would generate. And this is the BART abstractor. So let's look at what are, uh, what are the differences between these generated approaches. So uh, the first thing that comes across is uh, stable angina on long acting nitrate. This sentence in the reference summary 
is not at all generated by either of uh, the abstractors. So uh, we looked into uh, the actual documents that went into writing this discharge summary. We went through all of uh, the documents that were generated for the patient's admission to find any occurrence of stable angina or uh, long acting nitrate. And we did not find a single mention anywhere. So this is probably coming from uh, the structured data, uh, which is not something the model is exposed to. The model is only looking at all the notes that are generated for the patient uh, over the hospital admission and just using them. So clearly the human clinician knows uh, more and knows it better because of which they are able to write uh, the relevant parts from the structured data into the summary. The next thing that we can see is uh, the value 1.3, uh, which is actually in the reference summary, the model uh, often uh, would hallucinate, meaning uh, it will try to generate numbers which are uh, not accurate. And you see that the sentence rewriter actually hallucinates and writes it as 1.5 instead of 1.3. So how do you evaluate a, a discharge summary? Now, uh, there are uh, two properties of the discharge summary generated that we would like to highlight. Uh, one is that it should be uh, a faithful summary, meaning whatever the system generates, uh, which is the red blob you see here, uh, it should have a very good overlap with the source documents. To try to do a minimal modification of the source documents when it generates uh, the system summary. The second part is that it should be relevant. Uh, so just uh, extracting sentences from uh, source documents and uh, trying to uh, generate them uh, in a summary format is not useful. Whatever is the reference summary, uh, the way a human would have written it, it should be close to it uh, and it should also be faithful. So we are trying to look at something that is faithful and relevant when uh, the system summary is generated. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's look at uh, what are the results. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, we had seven sections for which we uh, generated uh, extraction and abstractive summary approach. So each of these three bars are uh, essentially uh, uh, the evaluations of uh, the summary sections. The, the leftmost set of bars, which is chief complaint, is the shortest section. And uh, the brief hospital course is the longest section. The, the bar in green is what the human generated summary looks like. And uh, the red one is the reinforcement learning based model and yellow is a threshold extension of it. Uh, we are trying to measure it using uh, a metric of uh, faithfulness and relevance that I mentioned uh, on the previous slides. So higher is better. If you look at this, uh, the general observation seems to be that the red bars are higher than uh, the yellow bars and the difference between the red and yellow is higher as we move towards the left. So for shorter sections, uh, reinforcement learning approach really works well for uh, extraction. Let's look at what the abstractors are doing. Uh, in this case, again, uh, the blue part uh, is representing a sentence rewriter. The red part is uh, representing BART and the right part, uh, the yellow part is expecting BART, but with a different extractor. Um, the uh, sections are ordered similarly in terms of length. And uh, you can see that uh, the sentence rewriter uh, does better as uh, you have longer sections. So uh, these are all uh, inter uh, experiments that I have highlighted here. Uh, if you are interested in uh, knowing the details, I would encourage you to go on archive. The paper is available. Finally, uh, I'm going to end with uh, uh, introducing everyone to what are the clinical, lang 
clinical natural language processing capabilities that are available on the AWS cloud. So the first service that I want to highlight is Amazon Comprehend Medical. Uh, it's a HIPAA eligible NLP service. So you have access to uh, machine learning trained models uh, through an API on the cloud. Uh, essentially, you don't have to worry about training a model uh, to do uh, uh, concept extraction or named entity recognition. These models are trained using state of the art approaches and they are just available in the form of an API. So what kind of uh, entities can we uh, expect to be extracted using this API? Uh, you can have uh, uh, seven different types of uh, entities. Uh, uh, a sample output is shown here. Um, the API will extract from a given piece of text uh, the, the name of the medication, the dosage, the route or mode, whether it is taken orally, uh, and then how frequently it is taken, uh, whether it is in the form of a tablet, uh, is it is take, to be taken daily, or is it taken every hour, every four hours? Uh, what are the different anatomies mentioned in the piece of text, whether they are negated or not? Negations are a very common phenomenon in clinical text where uh, the person who is writing the clinical note will try to rule out certain possibilities and mention a particular uh, medical condition or a medication in a negated context. These uh, entities are also linked to specific biomedical ontologies by a different set of API from Comprehend Medical. The current set of uh, ontologies that are available to uh, uh, through the API are RxNorm for medications, ICD-10 for medical conditions, and SNOMED CT as a comprehensive ontology for uh, uh, several different types of concepts. The next service that is available uh, and I want to highlight uh, does automatic speech recognition. So this is called Transcribe Medical. Uh, it is a HIPAA eligible uh, service. Uh, I just want to highlight that when I say HIPAA eligible, these are stateless services, meaning whenever any kind of data, uh, whether it is speech to transcribe medical or text to comprehend medical, whenever these are passed through the API, none of the data is stored on the AWS cloud. It is simply passed through the API and uh, you can get the results back uh, as an API response over the internet. So uh, these, uh, uh, this service, uh, Transcribe Medical, is available for uh, two kinds of um, speech uh, settings. One is a dictation mode where a physician will typically dictate a medical note to uh, someone uh, who is a scribe and they can write it. In this case, uh, the Transcribe Medical service will automatically convert the speech into text. And then there are medical conversations where two or more people are uh, having a conversation. Um, uh, they, these can be doctors, patients, uh, caregivers, uh, patients' relatives, and uh, the, the speech recognition engine will identify the speakers, uh, separate out uh, the segments, and uh, transcribe the text. Uh, currently, uh, several specialties are supported. These include cardiology, oncology, primary care, radiology, and urology. Uh, it is fairly easy to imagine that you can integrate the output of transcribed medical with Comprehend Medical to have a larger set of possibilities where transcribed medical will convert the speech to text and then you can run Comprehend Medical because of which uh, you can uh, extract information from the transcribed text. Finally, I want to come to the last service, which is uh, Amazon Health Lake. It is a fully managed Fire data store on uh, the AWS cloud. Uh, Fire is a, a standard uh, basically instituted by uh, the HL7 uh, community uh, for making sure that uh, data exchange across healthcare organization follows a standard protocol. Um, HealthLake will allow easy import uh, of clinical notes, insurance claims, 
we can uh, store them in a secure and a compliant and an auditable way on the AWS cloud. We can transform the data, meaning we can uh, pass the clinical nodes that are part of the Health Lake cloud, uh, tag them and, uh, and index uh, the unstructured data. Finally, because all of this data is now available on the Health Lake, uh, we can query it um, across the entire data set or for specific patient records, making it very easy to manage. Uh, Health Lake uh, can obviously uh, integrate with other AWS services like SageMaker, by which you can train different models to predict different clinical outcomes. You can view the data well by looking at quick site dashboards. Uh, and you can also obviously link it to Comprehend Medical and perform uh, the different kinds of natural language